Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Life United tonight. And I'm so glad to be able to come and share the Word of God with you tonight and, uh, and uh, be online with you. What an amazing uh, capability that we have that we can communicate with you online even when we're not here in person. But I want to tell you, uh, I believe there's a coming of season where we're going to get back together and uh, join together and see the power of God and the glory of God right here in the sanctuary. But for now, I want to share with you uh, some things from the Word. But I want to talk this just for a minute. Sunday morning, in both services, Becky and I are going to be sharing. It's Valentine's Day, and we're going to be sharing. And uh, uh, I want to just mention this because sometimes people think, well, if you're talking about Valentine's, you're talking about marriage. Well, in a sense, yes, we are. We're talking about relationships, and we're talking about being married and how God has has taught us over the years and that type of thing. But I'm going to be sharing some things also in regard to people who are single, uh, especially those who have lost a mate. Uh, I'm going to share with you something that is going to just blow you away. It's, it's amazing, uh, and you, you can't wait to hear that. I, I'm just telling you, you don't, you don't want to miss it. So we're going to have a great service, two services, <clears throat> and, and it's not just for married people. It's not just for people who are engaged or in love. It can, it can be for lots of different types of relationships. And uh, so I want to encourage you, be sure and be here if you can. Sunday morning, both services we're going to be sharing, and I believe you're going to be blessed by it. I want to pick up a little bit where I left off Sunday uh, and share some things with you. The Lord really dealt with me that during this season of time, and I believe even all the way up to Easter, that, that I want to encourage you and speak hope into your life. You know, people are getting discouraged. Uh, they're getting discouraged by life. They're getting in, discouraged by the pandemic. They're getting discouraged by what's going on in our nation. And there are a lot of things that can just weigh us down. But I want to tell you something. There's a, there is an ingredient that can keep you alive and going forward, and it's called hope. And uh, I shared some things Sunday about this, and I'm going to read the same scripture <clears throat> because I kind of want to jump off from there uh, about the woman with the issue of blood. Now, let me just paint the picture for you real quick. J. Iris has come to Jesus. He is a, a, um, a priest, very uh, prominent priest, and he comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, my daughter is at the point of death. If you will come and you will lay her hands on her, your hands on her, she will be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and it says there was a great multitude that followed him and thronged him. And uh, I don't know why this brought this back to me, but Becky and I have thought, laughed at this so many times. Many years ago, uh, we were at Dr. Cho's church in, in uh, South Korea, in Seoul, and it is a huge church. I mean, the sanctuary seats 25,000. And uh, it's like being at a, in a football or basketball arena. And so we're coming out of that crowded, I mean, we were packed in, walking out down these ramps, you know, and, and uh, we're walking out and and so Becky has on one of these dresses. It's got the white, I don't know what you call it, thing. Looks like a sailor type thing, you know. And, and, and so we're walking down. And all of a sudden, everybody in front of us just stopped. And so we stopped. Well, the lady behind us didn't stop. And she ran smack into Becky and put a perfect lip, lip print on her, on her little white thing she had on her shoulders. And, and we've laughed about that a lot because that's a throng. When you can't stop, when you're being pushed, when everybody's in there together, and, and, and that's what was Jesus was dealing with. And I'm sure the disciples were kind of doing their best to keep people <coughs> back as much as they could and keep them away as much as they could. But yet, that was, that was going on. Now, let's pick this up in verse 25 of Mark chapter 5. It says, A certain woman had a flow of blood 
for 12 years. A flow of blood for 12 years. Now, we, we don't know exactly what that, but we can probably speculate uh, and, 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 and realize, hey, we, we pretty much know what that flow of blood was. And, and uh, ladies would, I know, understand that a lot more than men would. But for, for 12 years, you can imagine that she had very little strength in her body. And it says she had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now, I'm not going to go back and talk all about this from Sunday. You can go watch that again if you'd like. But, but she spent all she had, but it wasn't all she was. Because there was something in this woman that was different than a lot of people. And, and so it, it says, and I'm going to read this to you the way it actually took place. You know, sometimes uh, in, the, in the Bible, you'll read something, and then it has a for so-and-so. Well, that's one of these times, okay? So listen to what, listen to what it says here, um, because it says in verse 27, now listen, when she heard about Jesus. All right, now I'm going to stop right there, because it, it, it tells what she did, but it doesn't tell you what she said before what she did. They tell you that afterward. And I want, you to, I want to put it in context here. So listen to this. When she heard about Jesus, she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. You see the picture. She said, then she acted. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? His disciples said to him, You see the multitudes thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Because everybody was touching him. And he looked around to see who, her who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, listen to this, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. That word affliction there can also be translated plague. You're healed of your affliction. <clears throat> You're healed of your plague. Now, that, this woman to me really is a picture in a sense of where a lot of people are today. And, and they've got to understand there was something different about her uh, than a lot of other people. This woman, now listen to me very carefully. This woman had something. She was expecting something. You think about it. She spent every dime she had trying to get healed. I talked about the fact she would have been the one calling the 800 numbers about the vitamins or the special something that would help you get free of your infirmity. She would have been the one calling. We don't even know that she was a, a, a Jew. We, in fact, probably not. But we know that she would not give up. She just was not going to give up. She was, now listen to this, expecting something to happen. Even though she'd spent all she had, that wasn't the bottom line for her. She was still expecting something to happen. Well, guess what? She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. Now listen to me. When she heard about Jesus, she had to move to a, a different level. She had to move to a different place. From, from where she was at home, okay, before she heard about Jesus, all she had was an expectation, a hope. She didn't know how. She didn't know when. She didn't know the carrier, what was going to happen. All she knew was, I'm expecting something to happen. 
But then, listen to me, when she heard about Jesus, something else happened. Now listen to me. The thing that I want you to hear today is this. It's twofold, okay? First of all, listen to this. If you keep your expectation for good, God will answer. He will send you an answer. It, it, it may not be what you think. It may not even be the vehicle that, that you think or the person. Or, but if you don't give up hope, God will do something in your life. He will send you an answer in your life. So here's what happens. You're expecting, you're looking, you're expecting God to do something. <clears throat> and you're expecting Him to do something great. And, and let me just stop right here because I know I'm speaking to people who've dealt with the virus, with this coronavirus. I want to tell you something that I know about that virus. That virus doesn't just affect the body, it affects the mind. It tries to steal your hope. It tries to steal your expectation of getting better. And I know people who, who literally had this virus and got so far down, they almost gave up hope. That's the devil. That is an enemy, and we have to fight that. And I know we need to fight it with our faith, but if all you've got is an expectation, I'm going to get better, Jesus is my healer, God's working, just hold on to that and let God do something because the answer is there for you. Healing is there for you. Deliverance is there for you. I believe it with all my heart. I know God wants to do something in your life. And so there was an answer. God brought her an answer. And that answer, listen to me, was Jesus. All right, but now, now listen carefully. The answer was Jesus. It says she heard about Jesus. Well, Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, how many of you know Jesus was the Word? He was the Word of God, and hearing comes by the Word of God. So when she heard about Jesus, He was a living Word. And so at that point in her life, something happened. Okay? She had had hope. She had had an expectation. Now she's got an answer. But here's the thing. Now, listen to me carefully because this is where a lot of people drop off. Listen, she had to act on what she heard because Jesus was not coming to her house. God sent somebody to tell her about Jesus, but she had to act on what she heard. You know, there are a lot of people that, that you can talk to about Jesus and they'll hear it, but they don't ever act on it. But the moment you act on it, you've released faith. And the moment you've released faith, you've released God to work in your life. Somebody may, you may say, you know, I've talked to them about the Lord a hundred times and, and, um, and they, they don't ever respond to it. 101 the, is the number. Because the hundred and first time they really hear it, then they're going to have to act on it. That's why, listen, I don't, I, I, one of the greatest things about church is it's a community where you can bring people where we've all been there, done that. It's amazing how that works. And so we can, we're, we're already here. We're ready. We understand. We're not, we're not against anyone because we know where we came from. And so God can do something supernatural. God can do a great, great work. So what happened here was very simple. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. See, God said, okay, uh, certain woman, we're going to call her uh, CW. Let's call her CW, certain woman. Okay. All right, CW, now you've been hoping, you've been expecting. Here's your answer. What are you going to do with it? Now, here's the thing that's amazing to me. Okay. Now, now listen to this carefully because I, I really believe that this is where we, we drop off a lot of times and we, we really miss something with God. Now, listen to this. The moment she heard about Jesus, you ready for this? She wasn't a Christian. She wasn't born again. Now listen to me. Faith became instinctive 
in her life. She knew this, I got to take this step. He's not coming to me. I'm not going to lay here and whine and say, well, if he really loved me, he'd come see me or if God loved me. No, you know what he did? He t- she took the next step. CW, certain woman, took the next step. She began instinctively to act on faith. She heard faith came and then she started acting on her faith. You say, well, how'd she act on her faith? All right, now listen, you ready? Listen. It was instinctive. And I believe it's instinctive with us if we have the right ingredients, all right? So listen, and I think this is where maybe some people are, are, are missing it, but just hang with me and I think this is gonna help you. Listen, she heard, so faith came, right? Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, now uh, if you go back to Mark and uh, <clears throat> you can read in chapter four, it talks about the sower sows the seed, Luke says that seed is the word of God, okay? So there were four types of soil that that seed was sown in. Only one of those produced fruit. This woman was a fruit producer from what God's word said, what she heard in the word of God. She acted on God's word. She didn't get offended. She didn't let the devil steal it from her. She didn't get offended because he didn't come to her house or, or somebody wouldn't take her to Jesus. You know, she didn't get involved with all of that. She said, first step, she said, and I love this because if you read this, and I'm going to go back to it real quick, because I think sometimes we miss this as well. Listen to this. In, in verse 28, it says, she said, if only I touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now, we think, well, that's, that's nice. She said that, and, and then she went and did it. No, nope, that's not what happened at all. In fact, let me just read you this, because I think it'll help you. Uh, the we, weast um, um, Greek uh, text says it this way. It says that, that when it says, she said, it, it, the, the verb there is imperfect. She kept saying. She kept saying, she kept saying, she kept saying. And I like what it says here. It says, she kept saying as she pressed through the crowd. She was saying it to herself and she was saying it to other people. Now listen, you see the, you see the flow here? Okay, now follow me. You see the flow here. Hope comes Hope is there, and you expect God to do something. God sends you an answer, but you have to act on that, and that's what she did. She acted on it, and she moved toward Jesus, saying, If I touch his clothes, I am going to be made well. C.W. knew what she was doing. She said, and it, it was instinctive. She hadn't been taught the Bible. She hadn't been taught Mark chapter 11, verse 23. What things things soever you say unto this mountain and believe. She didn't hear that. She didn't hear Jesus teaching on on mountain moving faith, that you speak to the mountain and believe in your heart. She didn't get any of that. Jesus said, if you say unto this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have what you say. This woman instinctively knew, I'm going to get healed. I'm going to say it, and I'm going to declare it before I receive it. And so what would she do? Listen. Here's what she did. It's, let, let me read you. I like this. I like the way that Weist Greek says this. Listen to this. It says, she kept saying as she pressed through the crowd to herself and to others. She kept saying it. If I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. Excuse me. Excuse me. If I touch his garment, excuse me, uh, I, I need to get through. I need to touch his garment. If I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. If I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. And you know what? She said, and then she acted. She didn't lay out on the porch and say, Jesus, if you'll come by where I can just reach my hand out and touch your garment. She said that, then she acted on what she said. 
I hope you're getting this. This is, this is faith 101 right here. This is how you activate your faith. Hope is great. It gives you expectation. God will send you an answer. And then he's going to expect you to act upon that answer. And he's going to expect you to move forward with that answer in your, for your life. And that's exactly what happened with this woman. Because once she did that final step, listen to this, she touched his clothes. She touched his clothes immediately. I like that, immediately. Immediately she felt in her body she was healed of her affliction. <clears throat> it was immediate. Not only was it immediate on her part, but it was also immediate on Jesus' part because Jesus said, you touch me. I, oh, somebody touch me. And it was a different touch. It was a touch of faith. And that touch of faith released power. And that power has gone out of me. Who touched me? And then the woman came and said, I'm the one that did it. And Jesus said to her, listen, daughter, your faith, your faith has made you whole. I love one translation that says this, daughter, you took a risk of faith and it made you whole. It, you took a risk of faith, it made you whole. Now, that's, that's exactly where we have to live our lives. We're not going to always have giant faith. I'm just telling you, listen, I've been around every faith person you could name. I, I know most of them, I've been around them, and all of them at some point in their life had to revert to hope. This is all I got. I'm expecting God to do something. But the difference, listen to me, the difference between the person who receives something from God and the one who doesn't, listen to this carefully, is the person who acts on what God brings them. They act, they move. It's, most of the time it's a word. It's a word from God. And that, that will energize your faith. You have hope, you're expecting God to do something, but listen to me. And then when it comes, you act on it. Because if you don't, you're going back to hope. And, and it, that's a dangerous place to be when you go back to hope. Now, let me just make this statement. Listen, you may have tried everything, just like this woman. But as long as you have hope, the possibility is there for God to do something. I, I would literally be here all night, I, I promise you, rehearsing the stories of just having hope, God bringing me the answer and faith coming and seeing God do something over and over and over again. I want to tell you, the problem is that a lot of people, well, they're expecting something, but they're expecting it on their terms. And if it doesn't come the way they think, then they reject it. And listen, I'm going to tell you, I, I believe God will continually try to come to you if you have hope and bring you an answer. But eventually, when you keep rejecting them because they don't look like what you thought, and I've seen that happen many times, <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the story um, about the man and it's a flood and he, he's on his roof and he's saying, God, deliver me, God, deliver me. So a guy comes by in a, in a boat. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. So somebody comes by a little later with another boat. No, I'm waiting on God. God's going to deliver me. God's going to deliver me. Finally, he drowned. And he went to heaven. He said, Lord, how come you didn't deliver me? He said, I tried to twice. That's really the way a lot of people are. Because they don't like the way it's coming. And when you don't like the way it's coming then you better be careful because your hope, and I'm going to read this right now, your hope can really become an, a detriment to you rather than a, a, um, a blessing. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Listen, the word there means 
One of the best words I can use for it is it drags out. Hope drug out makes the heart sick or weak, one translation says, or discouraged. And sometimes, listen, sometimes you're expecting something to happen. You're expecting God to do something and you think it's coming and, and, and then it's, it's not, it, that's not what it is. I mean, I've seen people, I'm believing God, I'm expecting God to do something. And, and, and I, I see this, and I've had people tell me this, and I'm, I'm not speaking to anybody in particular today, but well, the Lord showed me that if, if, <coughs> if I invest in this, it's going to make me a multimillionaire. And I'm thinking, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't tell them that because I'm not going to mess with their faith. But I say, uh, I don't know about that. And man, they've got their focus on that. And guess what? It doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, they start losing their hope. Just wait on the Lord. Keep your expectation. Don't get tied up into something. Hey, uh, uh, several years ago, we, we have a television station that we have not been able to put on cable, and we still air it over the air, Channel 45. And some of you have probably watched it. But, but I know that, that, that the Lord gave us that to be a blessing. A few years ago, the government wrote me a letter and said, we may be willing to pay you $40 million for your station. Oh, buddy, did I get hope. Did I get excited? Oh, God's going to give us $40 million. Man, I'm thinking about all the things we could do in missions, you know. And I mean, I, my mind was racing. But I, then I had just kind of a check in my spirit about it. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. What, not, not doubt, just a check. And, and, and so we walked through the process, ended up did not getting anything out of it. Not, not, nothing, not a penny out of it. But if I had put all my hope in that, actually maybe gone out and spent some of the money ahead of time or done something foolish, I would have been in, I would have been in trouble. So you, you, I'm believing God for, I, listen, I'm believing God for mi millions, okay? I'm believing God for an, a, 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 a right now 10 million. For what? For the ministry. I'm always expecting God to do something for the ministry, more than what we're doing, way more. I, I'm believing God for $10 million. I, I am. But listen, I'm not going to spend that money till I get it. I'm expecting it. I'm believing God, and I don't know how God's going to bring it. But see, I thought that was the way. Oh, God's going to bring us all this money. Well, it didn't happen. Well, <laughs> if you're not careful... And you get your hope focused on something like that. Let me tell you what happens. It's deferred or put off. Your hope's got to be in the right place. It's got to be on God. It's got to be on trusting God and, and not on something. I, I know pastors that have, have uh, expected their buildings to be built, built because one person in the church, you know, could do it if they wanted to. Well, when it doesn't happen, you know, a lot of times people's hope is deferred. It makes them discouraged. It makes them sick. Don't, don't live your life that way. When hope's dreams seem to drag on, <clears throat> one translation says, <clears throat> listen to this, the Passion Translation, <clears throat> when hope's dreams seem to drag on and on, the, de the delay can be depressing. It can be depressing. So you've got to be careful how you move forward. How you stay in the moment with your faith and, and, and with your hope and your expectations. And, and it's not, well, I thought he was the one or she was the one. And I put all my eggs in this basket. I told Fred to leave town. I wasn't interested in him anymore because I thought he was the one. Now I wish I had Fred back. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I'm just using that as an example. But, but if you're not careful, you're going to start messing with your hope. And if you start messing with your hope and it starts getting deferred, you're going to start getting discouraged. Just stay with the Lord. Let God handle it. Let God work. You just keep your expectation up there. It's just like this woman with this issue of blood. She didn't know how. She didn't know when. But she knew. And that's the way you have to, to, to do it. And you'd be amazed at what God can do. And then God can say something to you and all of a sudden you know. And when you know, faith comes. And instinctively you'll start declaring it before it happens, and instinctively you'll start believing and seeing what God can do. 
But, but you've got to keep yourself in the right frame, in the right place in order for that to, to happen. <coughs> and, and I'm going to show you a key to this that, that'll help you. Because if you don't already have hope in your life, it's hard to have your faith where it needs to be. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the expectations, okay? So if you've got an expectation, you've got something you're believing. And believing is, is, is half of faith. Believing is half. With the heart, man believes, and with the mouth, confession is made. So without hope, working there, you, you're not going to be able to get your faith online. And, and maybe it'll take you longer to get your faith online because uh, you don't have any expectations. One of the things that Becky and I did, and I've told this story many times, but I, I think it'll help you. We, <clears throat> when, when Becky and the girls were in the car accident, Becky was still in pain. She was in a brace, laying down, couldn't go see the other girls. I had to go back and forth. But the very first thing we did we, is we stuck our faith uh, in the ground, what we believed in the ground, what we expected, first of all, in the ground, the hope of what we expected. And that was that all of our children would come home healed and that Becky would have no issues with her back and that God was, <clears throat> God was going to work supernaturally. We didn't know how that was going to happen. If the doctor did it, great. If it was supernatural, great. But that's where we started. Why? Because we had something to build from. So now we're believing something. We've got hope. And as the days wore on, we started exercising our faith in regard to what we had believed. But it starts with hope. There's got to be that expectation. And, and let me tell you something. A lot of times it's not going to be something natural to encourage you. In fact, it might even be just the opposite it might be discouraging. Think about this. Over in Romans chapter uh, 4, uh, in verse 18, I'm going to read this in a minute, but Abraham, now think about it. Abraham was given a promise <coughs> that he was going to have a son. Now, now, now you got to hear me. He was too old. His wife was too old. There was no natural reason for them to hope that that was going to happen. Not going to happen, Abraham. Now, he, he, the Lord told him it was, but there was nothing natural. There wasn't one person that backed him up. And there wasn't one doctor that said, well, it is possible if we do this and this, and you might be able to. No, nothing. Just the Word of God. Just what God said. And, and I love this, the way it says this in Romans chapter Eight verse eighteen, because this is this is what I'm kind of what I'm trying to get at here. It's it says talking about Abraham. It says Abraham, contrary to hope, in hope believed. And you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. I don't understand that. All right, now listen. Contrary to hope, contrary to anything. Natural. Let me give you an example, okay? If you're on a boat and the engine dies and you can see the land, there's hope. But when you're out in the middle of the sea and you don't see anything, that's contrary to hope. You say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it to shore. Well, where's the shore? It's contrary to hope, okay? But it says, listen to this, who... Contrary to hope, or what hope ought to be, in fact, um, uh, let, me, let me read you this out of the Amplified Bible. Um, it says, for Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. Human reason for hope being gone. Okay? There was no, nothing logical about this. Okay? Listen to what it says. It says, he in hope believed. Remember what I said? You've got to keep your believing right. In hope, he believed. In hope, he believed. He expected 
God, and in that, he was believing. Now, he wasn't a faith giant, but he was believing, even when all natural hope was gone. Well, what was he believing? Now, here it is. You ready? Listen. According, listen, so that he may become the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. In other words, he had a word from God. That's all he had. The woman with the issue of blood, all she had was a word from God. Jesus is the healer. She had that word. All Abraham had was a word that God had spoken. Well, guess what you have? You have a whole Bible full of God speaking to you. What are you going to grab hold of? What does that do? It causes hope to come into your life. There was no natural reason for Abraham to hope. He hoped based on what God had promised. And let me tell you something, okay? That's true hope. Get the Word of God. This is what the Word says. This is what God says. This is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to believe. And I'm going to stay with what God said. Well, but you can't see the shore. I don't care. I don't care. I am believing God. God said he'd bless those who go out into the mighty waters. I'm not going to stay around the shore where it's comfortable and I don't have to have any faith. I'm going to get out in the deep waters. That's where I want to live, in the supernatural, in the deep waters. And if you're going to do that, you're going to have to make up your mind. Listen, in whatever area of your life you're thinking about right now as I'm talking to you that needs this, okay, Whatever that area is, the first thing you've got to do is find out what God says. Regardless of what else is going on, and make up your mind, this is what I'm going to grab hold of. That's hope believing. And then faith acts on that, and God begins to work. You know, faith acting is a lot of different things. It's not just something that you do because you want to do it. Sometimes it's just obedience. Okay, Lord, I'll do that. You'd be amazed at what God can do for you if you just act and do what the Lord said. So, so you've got to make up your mind that you're going to build your life on hope that's believable. Not, not by the world believable, but in your heart believable. And once you believe in your heart and you've got that hope, God will send you the answer and listen to me. You'll get your Isaac, so to speak. You'll get that answer from the Word of God. You'll see God do something in your life. And, and it is an explosive moment when that happens. But you've got to make up your mind, I'm going to expect God to do something. I'm going to expect God to move. And when He moves, I'm going to see God do something great. Because I'm, first of all, I've got hope and I'm believing in my heart. I, it's in me. It's in me. It's not superficial. It's on the inside of me. Now, here's the thing that you've got to do, because this is, you know, hope deferred will make you sick. It'll, 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 I'm going to say it this way, it'll mess with you. You know, <coughs> it'll make your heart sick. It'll make you discouraged. It'll make you, it'll make you um, um, depressed. But I want to tell you something. You can avoid that. First of all, by getting it in your heart. Abraham hoped on and he believed be, that he was going to be the father of many nations according to what was spoken. And it was contrary to anything natural. But he kept that hope and that hope kept him believing. And then when God says this is the answer, here's something else that takes place. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Listen. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. You've got to make up your mind that you're not going to back off of and, and, and back down from your circumstances of life and waver 
because God's faithful who promised. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. So that adds another element, doesn't it? Because the word there, confession, it's a great word. The word actually means to acknowledge the same thing as. In other words, you're acknowledging something that somebody else says. You're acknowledging the same thing as. Well, what are you acknowledging? You're acknowledging what God's Word said and what He's promised and that He's faithful to promise that. And you're acknowledging that out of your mouth. That's why the woman, listen to me, the woman with the issue of blood, I love this. I can see her. I've, I, I have meditated on this. I have seen this woman uh, fighting through the crowd saying, if I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. If I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. Excuse me. Can I get by? CW saying, I need to get in. I need to get in because I'm going to touch this woman. I'm going to touch his garment and I'm going to be healed. I'm that certain woman in the Bible today. I'm healed. She, she was not going to back off of that. She kept saying, hold fast the confession of your hope. What does God say? Listen, it, it works anytime, okay? It works anytime, but it especially works when there's nothing else to hold on to. When that's all you've got to hold on to. That when you do that, all of a sudden, God begins to move. I, I, love, I love what Proverbs 13, 12 says. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the last part of that is this. I love this. When the desire of hope comes, it brings with it a tree of life giving fruit. All of a sudden, you're starting to produce something. All of a sudden, you're starting to see God do something in your life. So here's the thing that you've got to hear. You've got to start with that expectation. And it's got to be beyond, well, I sure hope this happens. That's not expectation. Expectation means it's coming. I'm expecting it. I am expecting an answer. I don't know how. I don't know where. I don't know how it's going to look. I'm expecting an answer to this situation. And then when that answer comes, you've got to start saying, you've got to start acting and moving toward what God says. I know people that are so concerned about making a false step that sometimes it's just obvious this is God. Well, I'm not sure because if I do this, then this is going to happen and then this is going to happen. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Clear all that out of the way. What are you expecting? What are you believing? Press toward that and see God do something. And when you do, you'd be amazed at how you can live your life. Hope is a, is a powerful, powerful too. Listen to what it says, and I'm just about finished, but listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. It says, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. We have a hope that goes all the way to heaven. And it is an anchor to our soul, to our mind, our will, our emotions. It's an anchor to our soul. And, and, and that, that hope, having that constant hope, it keeps you anchored. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what the difficulties are. You're anchored. Now, you know, you can talk about that being an anchor of a ship out in the ocean, you know, and being tossed around. But listen, there are all kinds of anchors that will keep you steadfast. There are anchors in this building that hold these walls up. And, and listen to me. Hope is an anchor for your soul to keep you strong, to keep you staying with it, and, and, and gives you the capacity to enter all the way into the very presence of of God. And once, once you understand that, it's amazing what God can do for you in your life. Because you have the ability to go into the very presence of God. 
Let, let me read you this scripture, and I, I, I read it uh, Sunday, but I like it. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him. I shall yet praise Him. I love this translation. Listen. Oh, my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be upset. Expect God to act. For I know that I shall again have plenty of reason to praise Him for all that He will do. He is my help. He is my God. So you've got to know that God is going to work, and God will work super abundantly above anything you could ever ask or think. Don't get caught up trying to look at your circumstances and to figure something out. <clears throat> Just expect God to act. And then when God moves, you move. When God says do this, you do it. When, and, and you just move with God and you would be amazed at the supernatural work of God and what God will do for you when you do that. Hope is a powerful tool. It anchors me. Because anytime I get into a situation where I get disturbed, I throw my anchor out. No, here's what I expect. I expect God to act. Here's what I, I expect God to work. I expect God to bring the answer. I expect God to guide. I expect God to lead. I expect God to provide. I expect God to heal. And then faith is attached to that, and God does supernatural things in your life. So I just want to encourage you. Don't give up your hope. Don't get discouraged. Don't let your soul get discouraged. You've got an anchor. It's called hope. And it'll keep your soul from getting discouraged if you'll just expect God to act. It's amazing what can happen in your life. Father, I pray right now for every person as they're watching. Father, I pray for a supernatural encounter with your hope. Father, I pray they lay aside all of their carnal expectations and they put their trust and their hope in you in the promises of your word, and Lord, that you work out the details. You work in us even abundantly above anything we could even dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. You're working, Father. Thank you for that supernatural work. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Glory to God. I, I love you. I trust you got something out of this tonight. And listen, don't forget, both services, Sunday morning, we're going to be, Becky and I are going to be sharing uh, about relationships. Uh, it's Valentine's Day. And uh, so come. And again, I'm going to mention this because uh, there are a couple of things that I'm going to share that, that are, are that one of the things I'm going to share uh, is in regard to People who've lost a mate. How do you deal with Valentine's when you've lost a mate? Well, we've, we've had people in our church that have had that happen. They'll be here Sunday, and I believe God can give them an answer if they don't already know the answer. So I want to encourage you to be sure and, and be here and be, in, be a part of this. It's going to be a real blessing. And by the way, no matter how cold it is outside, it's warm in here. We're going to have the heat on. And so you can come. Well, it's too cold to get out. You get out of your heated house, get in your heated car to drive to your heated church. Come on now. Come and be a part with us. The children are ready to, to uh, be received. We're having more and more children come back, and uh, we're still doing our best uh, with all of our sanitation and all the things that, that uh, we've done in the past uh, as, as far as separation, but we're gathering together. And God's working, and we, we're excited about it. We love you. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.